So there is a new clan boss. It looks almost Eldritch-like, and this is the face. This is where it's going to be, and I am going to try and remain completely optimistic. I hope that it's going to be great, but at the same time, you know what I mean? Like, let's let's be real here. <laughs> I, I want it to be a W. I want to talk good things. I'm Demon Lord, Hydra, whoever that is. Okay. All right, well, that doesn't really give us much to go off of. Let's, hold on, what was this? What is this over here? What is this structure? What is this structure here? It almost looks like a ladder. Do you, do you, are you guys seeing what I'm seeing here? This almost looks like some sort of ladder. I think. And then it's got the ventricles like spiking up upwards. But I want to know what, what this is. What it, What is this structure here? What, what is this down here? What is this pipe? Is this a pipe? Is this a line? What? Hmm. And this looks like a platform almost. And yeah, I mean, I'm pretty sure this is coming out relatively soon. It's the end of the year. Polarium, you know, is getting rid of, get, unloading their roadmap, finishing up whatever they want to finish before they hand off the game completely to the next, uh, to TM, or what do you call it? Uh, whoever just bought MTG. You know, now that I actually look at this again, this kind of stands out to me. Malignant Will of the Night Revenants. So if I go into the Night Revenant Index and I start looking at their lore and start reading everything, maybe we could find something. All right. So I spent, um, you know, I spent, I spent some time skimming through everybody's um, stories and how they're all interconnected. These commons, uncommons, and rares don't really have much to say. I, they don't have anything to say. Skull Crown has a decently interesting one. Her name was actually Almira. She had a real name before. I thought that was pretty cool. But the, the basic gist of everything here is that in the Night of Revenants faction, there is something called the Cult of Kleth. Now, who is Kleth? Apparently, Kleth, and we can extrapolate this information from Versolf. Versolf had a little bit of lore here. Versolf used to be a king, and, you know, he just didn't want to die. He was trying to find immortality, so he went to... Narbuk, home of the Church of Malaya, uh, they basically told him that, you know, they can't do anything. They gave him platitudes and naysayings, talk of just accept bullshit, whatever you want to call it, just be happy with whatever. But then Versilf also met with a powerful Sacred Order Inquisitor, so somebody who was part of the, or it, at this time, is in the Sacred Order, called Kleth. Now, Kleth goes to him and says, hey, dude, I have that shit. I got that good shit you need, bro. You need that immortality? I got you, fam. You know what I'm saying? Kleth was like, hey, it's going to take a bit, but I got you, bro. And of course, Volsolf, Versolf was only too happy to provide it. Now, they started doing their shady shit inside of the, the cities, and eventually they got caught on and they got attacked. Now, Kleth was never found, but because Versolf helped him out, because they were able to spread the influence of the cult of Kleth, everybody owes loyalty to Versolf because now the Night Revenants and the cult, the cult of uh, Kleth and the cultists are now all over Teleria. So that's that's kind of like the introduction, the, the beginning of it, from what I could tell. I did take a look at the Sacred Order to see if there's anybody here named Kleth. I didn't really like read into their stuff because I'm kind of kind of tired of just reading about everybody, but because uh, there, there's a lot. But you know, maybe if you guys know anything, or if anybody wants to search through the, the Sacred Order then um, well, yeah, go ahead and do that and then let me know. But yeah, so everybody here eventually gets either um, indoctrinated, recruited, or they go and join the cults of Kleth. And the point of the cults of Kleth is to spread influence and they worship some higher being. We don't know what that higher being is, but I'm assuming it's going to be the new clan boss that's gonna show up. This is all kind of just guesswork. Kleth is basically at the top of his game and he's running He's running shit. Now, Bystoff has had um, some interesting 
stuff that dealt with Kleth as well. So the Cults of Kleth is a vast complex machine stretching across every continent in Teleria. Such a massive network of spies, cultists, necromancers, and slaves is impossible to coordinate under one single hierarchy. And so the cult does not only answer to its all but immortal founder, uh, Losan Kleth. His name is Losan Kleth. He rules where he can, but he can't control everything and everybody, you know, it, it makes sense. Now, Bystophis is just the commander in the Night Revenants, leader of a certain chapter, which um, helps out and was of great service to Kleth and his plans. However, Bystophis was not directly loyal to Kleth, unlike most people within the Night Revenants, but he was loyal to the cause. He believed that the cycle of death and rebirth that the Night Revenants must face in order to extend their lifespans was sacred. Ultimate goal, again, for the Night Revenants and the Cults of Kleth is to inherit control and power over all of Teleria. With him basically saying, um, dude, I, I fuck with the goal, but I don't really fuck with you, to Kleth, he started serving another guy, Syroth. You probably have heard that name. He's like the entity or the god, the opposite to Lumaya. I think, if I remember correctly, somebody fact checked me on that, but Lumaya is what Arbiter or whoever Arbiter serves. And then Syroth would be like the the, the um, antithesis to that. Syroth, I think, is his own god, or, or is like a god or some entity. But Bystophis fucks heavy with this dude. So Bystophis is like, yo, I believe in you. Like, uh, we're both kind of doing the same thing. Like, I fuck with your vibe. So like, I'm going to serve you. Syroth is like, all right, bet, dope. Like, let's go do our own stuff. So then they started making the Seth, uh, or the, the Seth, the sect of Syroth. Now... The sect grew and got their own power, and it was so much so that Kleth himself started to notice it. And he wasn't really like he was like he just wasn't feeling it. He was like, "This is not cool. Like I started this, and now you're somewhere else doing your own thing with some other guy, and you're trying to you know cause some type of trouble." Kleth wouldn't do anything outright, not openly, and not now. You know, in public, Kleth isn't doing anything. To, to cut them down because if he did then everybody within the night revenants factions would just be like yo what's up with this like that's not cool so Kleth left them alone which means that by Stophis and by extension Syroth still had time to grow and get their own foothold and power and whatnot but eventually uh, Kleth is going to do something or the, the plan the idea is that they're going to do that so by Stophis has got his own thing going on um everybody everybody's got some interesting things here talking about um oh here this he had a pretty cool one also apparently he's like the second strongest cut carillon the ringer is like the second strongest knight revenant in the entire faction and everybody venerates him but carillon doesn't really care about anybody else he, he's, he's just like you know i'm gonna do my own thing i uh, i don't even notice you guys your aunts and you know i don't really mess with you guys like that but his loyalty is to Kleth and no other. So great are the tales associated with him that some look to Carillon as the mightiest knight revenant of all, only bested by Kleth himself. So that was pretty cool. The other thing is Kleth is also worried about one of these other guys in the knight revenant factions, and it's Crixia. So Crixia had a pretty interesting story. Uh, I'm not going to get into it, but everybody is starting to recognize the knight queen Crixia as somebody who's really powerful somebody that they want to follow and it says here as Crixia's power grows some in the cult grow fearful of her spreading influence it is even rumored that Kleth himself is concerned about her growing popularity among the rank and file for her part Crixia wonders whether the cult would ever make good on its promise if they don't she may as well take the secret of immortality for herself but all in all like I haven't found anything direct that explains or uh, says anything about who is over here uh again everything that i read is just an abbreviated version of it and again these are just my my thoughts behind it but you can always you know tell me if you have something else i wish there was more information that i could share with you guys but this was just everything that i could find there isn't really anything of them saying that they're worshiping some specific god only that kleth started the cult and it became the Night Revenants, and within the Night Revenants, other people are starting to rise up and get their own power within the faction. You have Crixia and Bystophis along with Syroth, who kind of just sounds like Sauron. Summoning something. It's certain to be well thought out and thoroughly tested as to ensure maximum player enjoyment. I'm actually looking forward 
thoroughly tested to ensure maximum player enjoyment. I wish. I'm looking forward to it because what's going to end up happening is they're probably going to wait for all the CCs and the community to find all their bugs and then they'll probably fix it. It's it's reactionary. The, the problem that I have with a lot of the rules and backpedaling and like changes and rebalances that Polarium does is that there, there aren't really principles, like solid explicit principles principles i i think right a lot of the changes that we see are always reactionary every time something happens it's always a reactionary rebalance and you know you take that for good or for worse i wish they would just come out with like a, a level fair playing field for everybody and i wish they would put more time into the 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 testing and development on their end before releasing it but i understand the other side of that because obviously that's going to cost you guys money and then you're missing out by not generating that income that you would be if you released the content, made it hard, and then sold the solution. So I get that. But if we're talking about player enjoyment here, there needs to be more R&D. Don't forget the rewards are sure to be worth the effort. Yeah, exactly. Just like Amius and uh, Normal. The normal chest that you get from beating Amius on Centranos. Just Normal, by the way. Content creators, one hour after releasing, discovering a forgotten rare that completely breaks the amazing mechanics planned and tested for months. Well, what's wrong with content creators? I don't understand why people always... I don't understand these kinds of people. I, maybe I'm misreading this. I could be misreading this, but this doesn't seem like a good thing. This the, it seems more like like kind of an insult or like a backhanded comment. I don't understand what the hate for content creators is like. As, as somebody who was a consumer of content for like the longest time before becoming a content creator for Raid, like I, I don't get it. And then what I don't understand even further is the P are the people who complain about content creators, and then they still sit there and watch those same content creators. It doesn't make any sense. It's stupid. It's it's dumb. And any accessible champion used in a strong new comp is surely uh, safe from being nerfed. <laughs> they don't like using the word nerfed, guys. They want to use the word rebalanced or working as intended or a bug. All right? They're never going to say nerf. They don't want you guys to use the word nerf. After the Hydra debacle, there's no way they don't test this into the ground before releasing it. Sure. Absolutely. I'm pretty sure... Uh, honestly, yeah, they probably have. I'm pretty sure Polarium's learned from their mistakes right before they're about to hand off the game to the next company, to MTG. Yeah, absolutely. There's no way they never test... They don't, they don't test this into the ground. I expect it's going to take another hour plus each week and have all the worst parts of Amius, Hydra, and Sand Devil combined. Just kind of depends on you and it, if you decide to do that kind of uh, content. But I understand the allure to want to do everything in raid. I, I, I get it. Demon Lord, quote unquote, takes 20 minutes. Does it? I feel like if you have if you have the insta instant quick battle thing now, it only takes like a few seconds. There are now three clan bosses. You're causing confusion by not getting with the times when you refer to the first one as clan boss. It's the Demon Lord. Um. Well, I mean, I feel like. At least for me, I, maybe maybe I could be wrong. Maybe somebody who's new, but I'm pretty sure the majority of people here in, in especially in this Reddit post, contextually know what he means by saying the Demon Lord. Um, but I, I mean, I, I, I kind of get it, but then it, it's just, it's semantics at that point. But I feel like we all understand what people are saying when they say Demon Lord, you know, it, it's contextual. Uh, uh, anyway, let's move on. Sounds good. Maybe something like champs must be ascended. Only support champions from Blizzard <laughs> to make it extra hard. Uh, Lizardmen and Skinwalkers eligible. Unique champions only. Can't use two of the same ones. Must use one rare. No level 51 plus champions. Monster starts at level 350. Okay, yeah. So everybody, this is this is a joke. He's not he's not being serious. Could have fooled me. Welcome to the new episode of Raid Players Disappointed. This time, Raid Players Disappointed that developers updates the game and releases new content. So they have new challenges and reasons to play. How dare you, Polarium? Yeah, I mean, right. We, we, we want to stay positive. We want and hope that this is going to be great content because they don't decrease the time required on existing content and don't give enough rewards for your effort on the new content. Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, if you're going to keep adding new content and enticing players to play Raid pretty much all day, every day, because if you have, even if you have one account, right? I feel like you could be on raid all day easily. It's like a full-time job, no lie. And then as they add more things and more and more and more things, 
it just keeps on going. They they try hard to make us play the game. I expect it to be a buggy fucking mess. I mean, oh, a million a million abilities with no way of remembering. Yeah. Or like everything else, I'll put I'll put pretty much any champion in there and hope for the best until something works full auto. If it doesn't work after two to three days, watch a thousand videos explaining how to do it and copy it. Yeah, exactly. We belong to the hive. Starting to wonder if they just have ChatGPT surprise the player base. Let that fucker rip with new ideas. Hydra and Amius revolve around simply banning most of the abilities we've collected amongst our champions in a collector game. Here's an idea. Rather than have us read through the books, guess what's going to work and then realize we have a broken champ that completely subverts the developer's expectations, they should start with a whitelist of abilities that are allowed to be used against the bosses. Done. They did explicitly state that the blessings would be unresistible and walked that back after folks raged about sheep. Exactly. All of their rebalances that I can think of, all reactionary, right? They get enough backlash on something. This is why I say, like, we need to complain. But then I also, it, it, it's re it's redundant and it doesn't really make sense when I, when I talk to myself about this. And yes, I do talk to myself about this. Because it's like, on one hand, I'm like, hey, we should complain because the squeaky wheel gets the oil. And like, if we don't tell uh, tell or complain about anything, then they're going to be okay with everything. But at the same time, I'm also always just like, well, there's no point in complaining because Palladium's going to do what Palladium's going to do anyway. I confuse myself at times, but just I'm, I'm imperfect. You know, it is what it is. You know, part of me is also thinking like, hey, it's better you say something than to say nothing at all. Even if it is just once, right? And then maybe a gentle reminder in the future, like, hey, uh, Armand's is still broken. So, you know, or hey, where's that dog for Packmaster you guys promised? Oh, sorry, I'm gonna get people nitpicking and being semantic. They didn't technically promise us, they just alluded to it. They alluded to it when they saw that people weren't really doing the fusion. They hung it in front of us like a, as a potential carrot, saying that, hey, you might want to do this because there is a potential. Yeah, I'm gonna keep harking on this dog, by the way. And the reason I bring that up is because people are always like that. When they can't disprove what you're saying, or they don't have a strong argument, they nitpick every little thing you say. So if I say, oh, they promised us, they're like, no, actually, they didn't say promise, uh, dislike, unsub, get the fuck out of here. You know what I'm trying to say. My first thought was already having Mary's missions done. I'm full in that dog shit game mode. It's the new Cerberus boss. This was already leaked? Is it? Cerberus, wasn't I, I, I thought I was one of the first ones to bring this up. I, I made multiple videos and talked about it ad nauseum uh, a while ago when I was bringing up Packmaster, which by the way, I have no benefit if they come out with a dog for Packmaster. I just picked that one thing and I was like, hey, you guys said this, where is it? More videos talking about crossover events and potential things that Polarium could do. And I talked about Cerberus and everything. I had you guys, even in my community post, talked about uh, talk about his skills and everything. It was pretty fun. It was, it was a good conversation to have. I, I really liked that video. That was a fun video to do. He's got three heads, different skills. Very cool. Whenever any head takes a turn, the other two transform into their respective alternate variants. When one of them transforms, it places unblockable, irremovable, block buff damage in all of them and grants an inst uh, instant turn to the other two heads. Every three, uh, three turns it steals your turn, uh, your team's turn meter, puts all their skills on cooldown. So this boss is just going to be busted AF, bro. Characters named Shyak permanently get removed from your account if they die in a fight. Wow. Oh, I didn't even see this. Characters named Trunda are immune because Trunda needs to stay on top. The rewards for beating him are nine new piece sets that give 100% ignore defense, ignore stone skin, block damage, plus 40% 40, 40 speed and 60% crit damage cost two keys to battle him and 50 energy so this is a joke this had me fucking laughing though yeah I, i'll give it to you i'll give you that <laughs> what the fuck is this trying to guilt mouth but it's freaking it's newt i hope the boss doesn't notice something strange in my trunda my newt identifies himself as trunda don't forget during cvc you can summon a new champion that ignores all new boss skills and makes your team immune to the boss attacks and effects called Drunda <laughs> fuck it <laughs> imagine this bullshit if they come out with a champion called Drunda that's funny that's well that's even nastier than I thought luckily if it doesn't give shards or champ fragments I don't care as much more quality of life updates fuck new content yeah and something about fixing broken shit before releasing new broken shit 
Yeah. I mean, it's it's the same thing with, with a lot of things in life. Uh, with, with anybody, right? Not just content creators or developers or, um, you know, the United States of fucking America. Before dipping your toes into one other people's business or, you know, other aspects, why not focus on things at the foundational level? Focus on fixing the things that are broken first and then branch out right i'm i'm seeing like an eldritch god of some sorts i'm just not sure okay so that's what so all right look at this you see how and this kind of moved fast so i wasn't really looking at it but I, I was i was over here over here asking like what is this structure here but then if we if we come up we see these um scaffoldings is that what that's called or is that what these are called and it just goes down. And then what's this over here? Is this like a, a throne room? No, no. There's more over here. What's this in the center? I'm trying to see it frame by frame. Maybe I'll find something. Maybe on the sides. I'm trying to see here. It just seems like a structure that leads and descends down. I wonder if that's going to have any gameplay mechanics in, in the way that we fight the boss. Almost probably like a Doom Tower, potentially. Well, I mean, I, I could ask you guys, right? I haven't played any, I haven't really played any other gacha games, so I don't know too much. But is there anything that, that comes to mind, maybe in something like Summoner's War? Like I played Genshin Impact and Honkai Star Rail for, for a bit and uh but that was a long time ago i pretty much forgot everything and then i played summoner's war for a bit i tried eternal evolution it will see now if they can only fix the current clan boss by the looks of the game in-game timer for me it's finishing 47 minutes late tomorrow i'm super excited been staring at the golden shield or whatever it is since my first day at raid shadow legends i'm finally i'm finally gonna find out what's hiding there Maybe there's going to be frag, uh, fragments for a brand new mythical champion. You guys think a new mythical champion is going to come here? So much bitterness here. I'll never deny the fails of Polarium, but come on. Raid is fun. It's, but yeah, absolutely. He's right. Remember, we have to stay positive. We, we got to be positive. Raid is fun, especially if you don't wail. And we're getting some kind of content regularly. Let's enjoy the game and try to give meaningful feedback to Polarium. Oh, we have meaningful. We, we, we trust me. We have meaningful. We, we, we got it, bro. We have that meaningful feedback rather than threatening them. <laughs> he said, rather than threatening them with stopping your 50 euro monthly spending so that they can make the game better. That's funny. That's tough, bro. We're getting new stuff for fuck's sake. Yeah, you know what? He's not wrong, right? And, and again, this, this harkens back to... Uh, an old conversation we had in, in a different video, multiple videos, but um, one that stands out, I forgot which one it is, but it was it was one of those ones where uh, people were complaining about how much money they've spent in Raid, right? There are free to players, and then there's pay to winners. And then there's people in between who are, I guess you could call them like low spenders. They have the disposable income. It's their entertainment budget. Totally fine. I'm not telling you guys what the, you know, that, that's not what this conversation is. I'm just trying to, you know, draw the explain where every, the different perspectives and they were saying that or the the pay to winners went into my comments and, and one of them was just like yeah but if i start paying if i've invested so much money into raid it's not just a game anymore and the reason i bring this specific one up is because i i i, I try to uh, my voice just cracked a bit i try to always as much shit as i talk i always try to also leave a comment like this somewhere in the comments or i try to say it in the video like at the end of the day it's just a game it's just digital uh shit pixels that you're not gonna you know take with you at the end of your you know whatever and this guy was just like it's not just a game because i invest money into it so i don't like this argument that it's just a game i'm like you don't have to agree with me. You know, I understand that you feel like you quote unquote invested in it, but also that just sounds like a you problem because at the end of the day, you know, it, it, it really is still just a game. This isn't like some smart financial investment that you did. This isn't some galaxy brain move that you did here, investing your thousands of dollars, uh, expecting some sort of actual return. 
That's not what this is. And there's no argument that you can make that's going to make me believe that. Now, well, hold on. Let me, let, me, let me backtrack on that. Unless you are one of those people who tactically acquire and then tactically offload the account for a profit, that could be an argument there. But that wasn't this guy. I'm not going to get further into that. But unless you're one of those guys, which I'm assuming most of you guys aren't. I've only probably met like one or two in my Discord. Other than that, you're not investing in something that's going to give you return other than entertainment, right? If your argument is entertainment, sure. Again, I'm not going to tell you how to spend your money. But at the same time, I don't need you coming at me in the comments telling me I shouldn't believe or feel a certain way. You know what I mean? We went back and forth. I, I think after like the second comment, I just I just blocked him. I banned him. Uh, so I'm, I'm not going to deal with, with that because you can always tell and I'm not going to try to change people's minds. Like you can always tell who's here to just talk versus somebody who actually wants to have a conversation. So, you know, I, I just banned him. I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm kind of like done with dealing with shit talkers nowadays. I'll still put them on blast every now and then, but for the most part, I'm too busy. Yeah, bitter for good reason, though. Hydra changes were not well received. They didn't even nerf the one champ they needed to. They quote unquote rebalanced Trunda with extra steps. Sorry, but I don't know how to be excited for this after the how they handled Hydra. Gives very little confidence in their ability to balance this. Not to mention, there is already so much daily stuff that so many people, uh, most people are praying for a uh, quality of life updates, not more time investments. I love raid. Good. I like that you said that. I really do. But I can't help but be hesitant to this announcement based on past choices of theirs. This is a valid argument. I think this speaks to a great majority of people who are still here playing raid. I'm still getting people telling me they're leaving. I have, um, my clan leader who is actually, you know, his, he's deciding to step down leaving there's a lot of people in my my clan who are leaving uh as well and it's kind of sad because you know we've, we've been clanned up for uh years now but with everything going on it's it's gotten to the point where a, a lot of people are just putting raid down um so yeah if if anybody's wondering like oh how many people are actually leaving raid well in my experience enough for me to mention it some overtuned boss that can only be beat by maxed out champions you don't have offering a new gear set Great, thanks. Why don't you kick my dog while you're here? Hilarium, <laughs> where's your dog at? What is this? No actual information. New clan boss is coming, but no ETA, no details. Bring on the cycle of spending resources on a team, having that team nerfed, and having to invest them all over again in another team. People actually downvoted this as if there's no precedent, meaning there's no past history, for nerfs in the other two clan bosses. Exactly. That's how you keep a game healthy.